Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new build in The Sims 4. Today we are sort of starting a new build series on the channel. Uh, last week for Wizard Kitten Wednesday, I posted a Sims 4 build challenge uh, where every room in the house that I built had to be themed off of a different Nancy Drew game. And I was very uh, happy to see that you guys really enjoyed that video. I got a lot of comments asking to do more videos like it. And when I did a poll asking if you wanted to see more versions of that same challenge just with different Nancy Drew games uh, or if you wanted to see builds that were inspired entirely by a single Nancy Drew game you guys said that both sounded good the majority of you wanted to see both of those options so since last week was um, a bunch of different games in each room this week I decided to do just a single game and build an entire house and decorate an entire house with that aesthetic and I let my patrons over at Mystique Manor decide which build we were going to do today. I let them kind of decide the order of all of the builds that we're going to do for this particular series. And the game that got the most votes for our first build was, hopefully you can already kind of tell, Danger on Deception Island. So the idea with this series is I'm hoping that you can look at this build or you could download it off of the sims 4 gallery and you could immediately tell me oh yeah this this build is definitely based off of this particular game uh this build is definitely danger on deception island themed i absolutely see the inspiration in the color scheme and the build aesthetic and all of the decoration choices so that's my goal that you would be able to guess that this was danger on deception island even without me telling you so I found a picture on Pinterest of just kind of a coastal style, almost a coastal cabin kind of style home. And I used that to build the structure of the house. And I did all of that off camera because there was quite a bit of uh, tweaking and moving around there trying to get that to work. Um, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. I actually really enjoy the shape and it does kind of remind me of homes that I would see in a harbor hopefully in Snake Horse Harbor specifically. And then I did all of the landscaping with items primarily from the debug menu with all of the cats and dogs landscaping. And I really like how this turned out. We got some tall grasses. We have a lot of like the giant hosta type bushes. Um, these flowers are perfect for framing the house and then um, allowing me to place different uh, plants for the landscaping as well. And then the beautiful birch trees and kind of the fall colors. I thought that really gave Danger on Deception Island vibes. And of course I had to build this Danger on Deception Island inspired home in Brindleton Bay in The Sims 4 because Brindleton Bay is a coastal town. There is a lighthouse that you can actually visit. And because of that, there's a lot of lighthouse themed decoration items in the game as well. So used as many of those as I could possibly use, used as many kind of fish theme items as I could find. I designed this house kind of in mind for a fisherman and his family. Uh, the wife I imagine is a conservation scientist. I like built this family. And then the kids have big personalities. They're very fun, um, lots of nerdy interests that they're very vocal about and really enjoy. Um, though their rooms are a little bit more subdued. I think they um, just belong to some fun clubs and whatnot. But I wanted the rooms to still kind of reflect the style of the house while still also having a little bit of character so the rooms themselves are a little bit more subdued. But I did have fun creating that family and kind of imagining specifically a fisherman who owns a small business kind of living in this home and making it suitable for a fisherman. I also use these beautiful open doors uh, to go out onto the back porch so that the Sims can just kind of sit on that back porch and view the lighthouse and the ocean and the harbor from that spot. It gave me very much Danger on Deception Island vibes and I was really just loving the idea of sitting on that porch in the morning with a cup of coffee staring out into the ocean on a foggy morning. Oh, absolutely loved the vibes of that. 
I was really excited in general that Danger on Deception Island was the game that the patrons wanted to see first because I think Danger on Deception Island translates really nicely into The Sims 4 because we have all of those cats and dogs themed items. It's basically the entire build aesthetic and uh, furnishing aesthetic that we got with cats and dogs is exactly the kind of aesthetic that I imagine most of the homes in Snake Horse Harbor are built in and look like. So <laughs> that was definitely fun. Here I was gonna try and find some plants to put into the planter box on the deck, but I couldn't find any. So I just figured I'd leave it empty and then whoever plays in this house could fill in the plants with whichever ones they preferred. I also wanted to put this um, little kind of work shed out on the side of the build as well. So there's a floral arranging table and the woodworking table. I feel like the floral arranging table is more there just for looks. <laughs> the woodworking table actually is actually a little bit more functional. I could imagine needing to fix a lot of things as a fisherman um, and build a lot of things just for fun, like very handy tinkering kind of things. And I loved using these kinds of beat up rugs in here just to give it a little bit of warmth and coziness as well. So this is just a shed filled with a bunch of shed items. We have the beautiful ship wheel on the wall to kind of give us Danger and Deception Island vibes. Same with the fishing nets uh, and the buoys that are hanging on the inside and outside of the shed. I thought those really helped with that vibe as well. The barrels and crates definitely giving us those vibes. I really enjoyed it. Again, this was a good game to start this kind of challenge with because uh, there are actually several items that work really well for a Danger on Deception Island themed build. Here I am putting postcards for all of the ocean harbor inspired type worlds that we have postcards for there's actually multiple of them one of them even has a picture of a lighthouse in it and then i put a bunch of fish on the wall that i imagine this fisherman catches regularly as part of his fisher fishing business but now we're moving on to the kind of meat and potatoes decorating part of the build. This ended up being a three bedroom and two bathroom house. I designed it for a teen and a child sim as well as two parents, but you could definitely modify it however you like. There is a separate kitchen and then there's a combined dining room and living room. The kids' bedrooms are on the bottom level, connected by a Jack and Jill bathroom. And then on the upper level, there is a small office, a separate bathroom, and then a larger main bedroom. And basically the entire house is decorated with the cats and dogs pack. That was definitely my default when I was like, okay, how am I gonna decorate this room? My, my first thoughts were, okay, blue. Blue, gray, and green were definitely the main colors when trying to get this aesthetic. Um, some gray accents, some brown accents for the kind of the neutrals. Um, but yeah, blue, gray, and green were the primary colors we were going for. And we actually didn't get a kitchen set with cats and dogs so I was looking at all of the kitchen sets and I thought that the country kitchen kit actually works really nicely in this dark blue swatch especially since the counters themselves are a little bit beat up and I thought um, this kitchen probably gets a lot of use I imagine that the family really likes to cook um, probably fish. <laughs> I think they do a lot of fish fries and a lot of fish based meals. I loved putting the little lighthouse decoration in here and then all of the decor items from the country kitchen kit. Honestly, hot take, maybe, maybe not, maybe it's not a hot take, but if you are interested in getting any of the Sims 4 kits, the country kitchen kit is easily the one that I've gotten the most use out of. I use the kitchen stuff in that all the time and even if I'm not making a country kitchen with like the counters and the sink and the appliances the decor items I use in basically every single kitchen that I make now because they're so cute and versatile like they're items that you would find in any kitchen tins holding items the, and in so many beautiful colors too um, I just absolutely love it there's a 
I forget what, like a casserole dish that um, you can also use. There's these jars that you can have uh, coffee and tea or grains or like flour. It's just perfect. So Country Kitchen Kit, by far my most recommended kit. Now we're moving on to the entryway, and I used a lot of items here that reminded me of the lighthouse area of Danger on Deception Island. Obviously the lighthouse painting. I think this lantern uh, looks very much like a lighthouse itself, just the way it's designed, and it reminds me of being in the lighthouse in the game. And there's a lot of beautiful artwork around this house. It's very expensive artwork artwork so this house did end up being like quite a bit on the spendy side mostly because I think the art is some of the most expensive art that you can get in game but I had to use it because the, it was ship inspired it was lighthouse inspired it was beach inspired it was sailor and fisherman inspired so I couldn't not use it Oh, this house does also come with a laundry nook. I don't know if you saw that. It uh, went by pretty quickly, but there is a small little laundry nook as well. I made sure to put uh, laundry baskets in the house also. I mean, when you're a fisherman, you need to do a lot of laundry. I'm sure it's a very messy, messy career and laundry is a big deal. So wanted to make sure I included that for this family. I love how this little dining nook turned out as well. I think the bluish gray wood tones uh, really convey the color scheme of the game and then just putting the ship on the table as kind of the centerpiece. I really enjoyed that. Uh, we've got like the little lobsters on the wall, the tuna fish as well. And then um, these feather paintings I just kind of moved around to, or not paintings, I guess, but feather displays I moved around, but they're all birds that you would find in Snake Horse Harbor, um, mostly like seagulls, uh, <laughs> probably the main bird that you would find in Snake Horse Harbor. This house doesn't have a TV. I don't think the parents are necessarily against TV. I just think it's not something that they consciously think about. Like, oh, let's get a TV, that's important. I think it's just not on their minds. Um, I think the whole family is very outdoorsy and spends a lot of time outside uh, just doing other things. I did also wanna make sure that I included an aquarium in this build because obviously beaches, harbors, fish, fishermen, <laughs> kind of goes with the vibes that we're going for. And I almost, never put aquariums in builds. I often forget that they exist. So I purposefully made a little nook for the aquarium and I'm really happy that I did because I think it looks really nice and it's just a fun bit of decor that I've never really included before. I'm also really pleased with how these bathrooms turned out. I decided to use the exact same color scheme and decoration for both of the bathrooms. This Jack and Jill one that separates the kids bedrooms and then the main bedroom on the upper level, um, both with sailor themed art, ship themed art, <laughs> harbor themed art. Um, and we went more green in the bathroom, mostly to kind of match the tile, which for some reason was just giving me sailor vibes. So uh, it's the cats and dogs plumbing set. And then the wall, the tile is actually from Realm of Magic, I believe, which is my most used item from Realm of Magic as a pack by far. I find a lot of the rest of the items actually very difficult to use. Um, so there's that, and I really like how the bathrooms turned out. They're much darker than a lot of the rest of the house. It feels a lot warmer than other parts of the house, but I think it works. I think it looks, um, it looks nautical still, <laughs> despite the different colors. This is the little office nook, the work at home office for either of the parents. I imagined uh, mostly the fishermen for any of the business type parts of the job that the fishermen would need to do. This would be the office space in which to work. A uh, nice little computer here. And then I wanted to decorate the desk with Danger on Deception Island themed items. So we have a snow globe with a lighthouse in it. We have a message in a bottle, just like the ones that we get from Hilda Swenson. And we have a snow globe with a sea monster in it representing Caddy or Cadborosaurus from the game. And I really like how it turned out and I'm very pleased with it. And the bucket is supposed to be just like a a trash can for the office. I just like how it looked. I thought it looked very, very seaside. 
Um, the hallway doesn't have a whole ton of decoration in it. Really, it's just kind of trying to fill in space uh, with a couple decorative items. These bird uh, feather displays that I mentioned before, some beachy seaside art. And then we're moving on to the main bedroom here. And then we'll end with the two kid bedrooms. I was having a really hard time figuring out what to do with the curtains in this room because this room has so many windows, which is a good problem to have. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful natural light in this room, but getting curtains up for all of them was really difficult. I ended up using these curtains that came with the Desert Lux kit. This was this kit was available for free. It might even still be available. No, I, I think it, it's not free anymore. But it was free for anyone as kind of a gift to the people who already had The Sims 4 before the base game went free. And uh, I really, I think the kit's really nice. But easily the thing I'm going to use the most from it is these curtains. Because it has the ability to put a bar between the curtains and really customize the length between the curtains and they come in a lot of really nice neutral colors so even in a build like this where the style might not necessarily work because they have this blue sheen to them i can make them work really nicely in this bedroom so very grateful for those curtains they were definitely a lifesaver <laughs> The entire bedroom set is from Cats and Dogs. We're again going for this bluish gray wood, which has been working very nicely. I loved this art piece from the Fitness Stuff Pack, which just looks like a map of Snake Horse Harbor to me. So I thought that was perfect. I love that it's in the blue because that's perfect for our color scheme. And then we are decorating the kids' rooms down here, which are a little bit uh, less Danger on Deception Island themed, more suited to the design of the kids. It's more the colors, I think, that are Danger on Deception Island themed for these two particular rooms. And it's more of a sea foam green and kind of a teal turquoise green for the teen uh, room here and then the other one is going to be more yellow and blue for the child sim however i was still able to sneak in a very nice fish poster over here using a lot of stuff from the high school years pack we just got some really fun decor items from that pack that worked out really nicely for going for a particular aesthetic for teen sims so very grateful for that i got to use this beautiful um egg chair which is just so fun <laughs> i love this egg chair so much definitely would love to have one in real life when i worked at pier one we called them swing because uh there's kind of like a how to describe it it's a circular chair um where the cushion is a perfect circle and you put it in kind of like a bamboo frame and you're just able to kind of nestle yourself into them. And they're wonderful. Papazans are absolutely amazing. I don't know if they call them that other places, but that's what Pier One called them. And then any version of it um, just ended in a zon. <laughs> so there was a swinging version um, that we called a swing a And I have one in my kitchen that's meant to hold fruit. And so it's a fruit a -zon. So there's your fun fact for the day. Again, don't know if that's what they're actually supposed to be called, but here we are. I had to sneak a whale in, of course, because whales rule. And we have a surprisingly limited number of like nautical themed decorations, but we got another Cadborosaurus in here. We got Caddy in to the kids room here. Lots of blue and yellow, kind of warm cream colors going on in here. A little goldfish on the table. <laughs> But I was very happy to at least get one whale into this build. Gotta get the whales rule in there. It's an absolute necessity. And then just kind of finishing up the kids room with a few decorations. But we're coming up on the screenshots here very soon. I would be so curious to hear what you guys think of this build. Would you have been able to guess that this was a Danger on Deception Island themed home even if I hadn't told you do you think this home would fit nicely into Snake Horse Harbor just what are your general thoughts and are you excited for more builds in this series but thank you so much for watching fellow detectives please feel free to like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content thank you so much for watching fellow detectives I will see you soon